the heroine had to know how to dance, she had to look good, and that was the basic criteria back then. Anyone from this industry who says that, um, you know, a nasty article or a rumor doesn't affect them, I think they would be a liar. It was the most difficult decision of my life, where I said, okay, you know what, I've quit. I'm gonna quit this. They said, oh, she's an actress, now she's got nothing to do. She's, she's become a jewelry designer. So I got all that. So I just feel, you know, people make such a big deal of Botox and, you know, all these procedures or whatever. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, daughter, um, businesswoman. Um, I've got another venture coming up. You know the words that are going to pop up in your head as soon as I name my guest today is poise, class, elegance and grace. But behind all this, she's also a woman who is extremely strong, fierce, independent and very, very delightful. Joining me in a conversation today is Neelam Kothari Soni. Hi. Hi, welcome to Pinkula. Thank you for the fantastic welcome <laughs> yeah. and introduction. You were born and brought up abroad. I want to know that were you ever picked uh, for your westernized image or your accent? So first of all, I just want to, you know, clarify certain things. I wasn't born with this accent. <laughs> <laughs> In Hong yeah. Kong, I went to a British school. Yeah. Then from Hong Kong, I moved to Bangkok and then I went to an American school. Yeah. So that's why people say where she got this accent from. It's a, it's a twang. It's a mix of American, British, yeah. I mean. So, have I been picked? I mean, people have picked on me. Yeah. Uh, they have said, you know, oh, the accent is still, you know, with her after yeah. so many years. I mean, it's just an inherent thing. Yeah. Now, if you watch my, my interviews and, you know, back in the 80s, and if yeah. you watch my interviews today, mm -hmm. I think I speak the same way. And how do you sort of deal with it? Like, are you like very immune to it now and don't take it very seriously? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I don't yeah. care because it's something which, I mean, you know, it's it's inherent. You know, going back in time in 80s and 90s, you had said in one of your interviews that women were more like, you know, they had to look good and they were never the hero. So did that ever evoke angst within you? And how do you think it's changing now? So I think when I was doing films, um, it was always like a standard kind of movie that was being made, a masala movie. Hmm. You know, uh, the heroine had to know how to dance, she had to look good. And that was the basic criteria back then. Hmm. So I mean, half the times, half the movies that I, that I did, hmm. uh, which I actually haven't even watched. <laughs> Why? Yeah, because first of all, I didn't have the time, honestly. Yeah. I mean, and, and in those days, you had to go to the theatres to watch your movies. Right. And uh, secondly, a lot of my roles in the beginning were typecast because I was so young. Yeah. Okay. Was I looking to do the meteor roles or the women-centric uh, characters? Not in the beginning of my career because I was so young. Yeah. I was happy playing you know, the young yeah. teenage girl, the baby doll yeah. image that I had, you yeah. know, who, who was prancing around, dancing, singing songs, you know, so yeah, I was happy doing that. It's only towards the end of my career that mm. I, um, I just felt that, okay, enough of doing all that. I mm. wanted more substantial uh, roles coming okay. my way because of course I had matured, I had grown up. Yeah, yeah. I think after the OTT platforms have been launched, mm. um, I think it's just a different ball game altogether because now people, makers are willing to experiment. Right. They're not only worried about the collections yeah. over the, the weekend, they, you know, they can experiment. Uh, it's not so much of a risk, Yeah. yeah. I think now. Have you considered sort of, you know, doing something in today's time which is more women-centric? I would love to. Yeah? I would love to. Something interesting came my way. Um, I would I would definitely love to. But you see, the only thing is at this point in my life, my daughter's nine. Yeah. Ahana's nine years old. And yeah. 
she demands my time. <laughs> she doesn't request, she right. demands my time. So I think, yeah, if, if of course, if the shooting is in Bombay, and um, then definitely. And you know, your struggle in the industry was never in terms of getting work, but at a very young age, there was a lot of spotlight on you, on your personal life, or people would write, you know, the media would write about your relationships, about rumors. At that young age, how did you sort of deal with so much invasion in your personal life? I found it extremely difficult, extremely difficult. Luckily, there was no social media, there was no internet. Yeah. So, uh, but everybody read the film magazines, be it a Cineblitz, Stardust, right. everybody read yeah. it. You know, so it was rough. It was it was very very hard, and I think anyone from this industry yeah. who says that um, you know a nasty article or a rumor doesn't affect them, I think they would be a liar. Yeah. Because it does affect you. For sure. And I think because I was so young and I wasn't from this industry, my family is not from this industry. I found it very difficult to deal with it at times. Yeah. I mean, I would just go into a shell and just you know. Uh, not go out for for days because I was I was just traumatized and I was devastated with with nasty articles You know, you just ask yourself why you know was that really necessary? I think the media nowadays is a lot kinder is a lot nicer back then it was they were they were brutal hmm. I think of over here now uh, with social media and Instagram and Twitter. Yes. It's more the trolls yeah that are attacking the celebs or the actors or the actresses True. more than the journalists you were one of the actresses who was very very particular when it came to her dressing or you weren't comfortable showing a lot of your skin and you've said that you know it's very difficult for my stylists also to kind of style me sometimes where does this come from my masi and my mom okay used to do my styling hence the high necklines. I mean, I wore shorts and I wore short skirts hmm. because I was comfortable in it. Yeah. But whereas my necklines and everything, so... Did that ever like hamper your work or probably no. getting projects? No, because mm -hmm. I think I started off so young and because I had this image of a baby doll yeah. with a baby face. So mm. if I ever tried to sort of reveal or, you know, I don't yeah. think it would have suited me. And I don't think people would have accepted me that way. It's it's a personal choice and no one's forcing yeah. uh, anyone to show skin. Yeah. I mean, does anyone force Salman to remove his shirt? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the audiences want to see that. True. Why are we all only talking about women? Yeah. I mean, men also show skin. You faced like superstardom, but you also saw a very major downfall. Now, when you look back at that phase of your life, those two phases, what goes on in your head? I think because I had a solid backing. Hmm. I had, I came from a family that encouraged me uh, to do whatever I want. Were they okay with me joining films? No. But then once I did decide to do it, um, I got complete 100% support from them. And then I always knew I had a fallback option. If not films, then what? A woman has to look forward to doing something. Right. Be it whatever, a homemaker, um, being a mother, being a wife, mm -hmm. or some sort of work and mm -hmm. you know, being independent. I think it's so important. Now, when I felt that the films that were yeah. coming my way yeah. were not so, it wasn't, they, they weren't great offers and I, I wasn't happy doing those films. So I decided uh, it was the most difficult decision of my life yeah. where I said, okay, you know what? I've quit. I'm going to quit this when I'm on the top rather than just sort yeah. of fading away. Yeah. It was a very, very hard decision and uh, the transition from being an actress to an entrepreneur, a jewelry yeah. designer, uh, it was one of the most difficult transitions for me. Did you ever face a scene where people didn't, in the entrepreneur business, didn't probably take you seriously because you were an actress? So, exactly. So yeah. that was more difficult for me than joining films. Films was uh, a cakewalk. The transition of becoming a businesswoman and mm. um, becoming a jeweler, yeah. people didn't take me seriously in the beginning. I would say for the first five, six years, I slogged. Even though I came from um, 
Yeah. My dad, my my grandfather, all are from. It was a family business. business. It's a yeah. family business. Even then, people didn't take me seriously. Oh um, even though, because yeah, they said, oh, she's an actress now. She's yeah. got nothing to do. Yeah. She's she's become a jewelry designer. So I got all that. So that was really really tough. But I stuck to it, and thanks to my dad, he said, you know what. You know, you've you've got the eye, you've got the talent. Stick with it. Do you feel that if a man did that, if an actor, an entrepreneur, Brina, it would have been different? Honestly, I think for a man, most men to multitask yeah. is close to impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now, I'm I'm acting. Um, I'm a mother. I'm a wife, daughter, um, businesswoman. Um, yeah. I've got another venture coming up. Uh, so I'm not boasting, but I think a lot of men cannot multitask. So uh, I think women have the ability, yeah. and they yeah. have the the inner strength and the drive. True. I feel. You once mentioned that surgery is actually a metaphor for separation. You know, it's painful, but it helps you heal. How did you sort of heal in your bad times and hardships in life? Going through bad times. Uh, I think there's no one particular route or solution. I think you have to give yourself time. Right. Uh, you have to give yourself time to heal. It's so easy for people to say that, oh, it's okay, just forget about it, move on. Hmm. But I think it's very difficult to just. Uh, I think it it does you more harm if you just sort of try and forget about it and move on. I think you need to give yourself time to process. Right. And then move forward. It could be a month. It could be weeks. It could be whatever it is. Yeah. I think everyone has a different route. I want to say that your parents were not very keen on you joining the films. How did you convince them at that point of time? So I got the offer, and I think for months my dad didn't tell me uh, oh. that I had got this offer. Yeah. It's because in their head it was a big capital N O. Yeah. You know, our daughter is never joining films. Yeah. And we weren't from the films. We didn't have a filmy background. So, my dad over lunch just mentioned to me. He said, "You know, uh, by the way, you've got a film offer." So, oh my God! For, so first, and I was a very shy girl, very shy girl. You know, in school plays, on stage performances, I was always the little girl right at the back in the corner. Right. I was very, I was very, very shy. Right. So he told me, and I said, "You know, Dad, you know, the next time I go to Bombay, can I just?" Try this out, and yeah. you know I don't mind, you know, weighing the options and see how it works out. Yeah. He was like, no, no, it's impossible. You're not joining films. Yeah. Anyway, so when I came to Bombay for my uh, summer vacation, Ramesh Behel, yeah, uh, the maker of my first film, he said, uh, just do a screen test, and I just loved it. I just loved being in front of the camera. Wow. So it was like a discovery for yourself. It was a discovery, and and. My mum was like, "But you're so shy. Yeah. You can hardly speak. How can you do this?" Yeah. Uh, anyway, we went back and forth a couple of months, and finally they they agreed. And because I said, yeah. "I'll do this one film, and I'll yeah. come back to Bangkok." And you said that you love being in front of the camera, and you're also loving your jewelry designing. If I could ask you, if there's some one of these things that you could choose, which one do you enjoy more, and why? I can't say either because facing the camera. Brings out another Neelam. Mm. I mean, it just I just come alive, and I just feel so good yeah. being under, you know, yeah. the uh, the lights and in front of the camera. I mean, it just it's a different feeling altogether. And when I'm creating jewelry, it's my passion. Right. I love that as well. But I would say I like being my own boss, so I would say jewelry <laughs> designing <laughs> for sure. When you decided to not face the camera, the only person who sort of convinced you every time is Karan Johar, uh, because you did a cameo in Kuch Kuch Hota, and then you did Fabulous Lives also. I want to know how does he convince you every time? I remember I was living in Varsova, yeah. and uh, he called me up and he said, "Listen, uh, Nino, I have this one role, and I had left films by that time." Yeah. 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 So uh, he says, "I've got this uh, this really cute role, and you play yourself." Yeah. So I heard him out, and I, you know, who says no to Karan Johar? No one. <laughs> <laughs> so and he has the gift of the gab, and he convinced me. I mean, no doubt. I mean, it was it was a very sweet cameo. It was a very sweet role. Yeah. And again, you know, we were on a flight, and he yeah. he just said, "I'm thinking of this yeah. concept with the four of you. You yeah. four women are mm -hmm. mad." 
and watching the four of you together is just hysterical. He says, "I'm yeah. making a show." We were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Didn't take it seriously. We didn't take it seriously. Yeah. And then he called me for a meeting, and uh, I was actually the first person to back out. I told oh. Karan, yeah, I told Karan that I cannot do this. He said, "Look, Neelam, it's going to be fun." Yeah. Okay, it's not the first time you're facing the camera. Just be yourself. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And he, he has this. Been. He has this knack of, of bringing me back. You made a comeback with a bang because there was no other better way uh, to do this rather than being yourself on camera. You also did a very brave thing by showing the entire Botox scenario uh, visually, and we've not seen any actors do this. How did you be comfortable with that? So I just feel, you know, people make such a big deal of Botox and you know all these procedures or whatever. Yeah. And I just feel, what's the big deal? Yeah. You know, you are gonna age one day, and you are gonna do stuff to make yourself feel good and mm -hmm. look good. And I just feel, why not? And I was like, you know what? People take themselves too seriously. What's the big deal? Yeah. That was my whole thought process behind it. Uh, did I give it too much of thought? Oh my God! First time, no. I just told yeah. the crew that listen, I'm facing the camera. I'm going to do this. You guys want to film it? You know, it's the first okay. time that I'm, that I'm yeah. doing it, and yeah. they just they lapped it up and they just grabbed the opp opportunity. And you know, I mean, there's no discussion at home no, with somebody or anything. Not at all. I just didn't think it was such a big deal. Yeah. I mean, what is there to hide? Sometimes I see women, and and I just feel that oh my God, for her age. She looks really good. I just wish I knew what she does, who she goes to, what is she, you know, what yeah. is her regime for. I just feel so what if you can help another woman. I told myself, and Samir also told me, and Karan also told me. Yeah. He says if you're gonna do a reality show like Bollywood Wives, if you're gonna do it, then you gotta give it your hundred percent. If you're gonna hold back, don't do it. Yeah. You know, we're putting our lives out there. We're putting ourselves out there. And I just felt that it's really not a big deal. You decided to go all out and be your own yeah. self. That was great. Watch us in season two. Yeah, <laughs> I am waiting for season two. I love it. It's loved mad. It. It's gonna be mad. <laughs> But you also got trolls. How did you deal with the trolls bit of this? There was more love. Yeah. Okay. And when I say this, uh, when I was doing films, the only way we could connect with our fans was fan mail. Yeah. The actual letters that you would yeah, get, yeah. and this was the first time, mm -hmm. actually, that I, I saw how many people out there actually love me. So many times, if I'm at a mall or if I'm taking a flight at the yeah. airport, like I have mother and daughter, sometimes daughter and father running to me, yeah. like, "Oh, madam, I was such a big fan," and the little kid is saying, "I saw you in Bollywood Wives. You know, yeah. you're so cute and yeah. you're so lovely, and yeah. you know, it's just." It's just amazing. Seeing so much love, do you have any plans to probably take up acting again, full fledged? Probably when Ahana grows uh, in a few years and she becomes a little more independent. Well, look, I mean, I can plan how much ever I want, but I think it, you know, if something interesting comes, like I said, yeah, you know, why not? I am doing something, um, which I can't discuss. Oh, <laughs> we want to uh, know this. I, I am doing something which is which is really really interesting. When can we expect that? I think towards the end of the year. Awesome, waiting, waiting <laughs> eagerly, and I'm sure like everyone's going to be super excited because we are fabulous, and then we have something else also now. Yeah. My last question before uh, we let you go is: for a woman, her beauty is extremely valuable. When you see like you know your first white hair or a wrinkle. Does that ever uh, lower the confidence of a woman, or do you no. get secured with time? Why should it make you feel bad or insecure or yeah. or down? I mean, yeah. not at all. Yeah. In fact, uh, is it annoying? Yeah, because yeah. you you know you're you're yeah. constantly looking at your white hair, or you're constantly looking at yeah. your. You know, a line on your face or a dot on your face. Of course, I mean that's yeah. annoying. But does it demoralize you? No. I think yeah. you know, it's it's a part of uh, aging, and I think every woman, you know, goes through this, and yeah. you, there's nothing to feel bad about. If you could tell your women fans something that is very inspiring and an advice that you have always had in your life and followed. From anyone, what would it be? I mean, if you're passionate about something, 
do it. Mm. Give it your hundred percent and do it. Yeah. You know, uh, I just think that for a woman to be independent is so, so important. And uh, following their passion and their dreams is also important. Everything's not about just marriage and having children. And, yeah. you know, it's not always just about that. Yeah. I think it's, it's important for a woman to um, do something for themselves. And on that note, I would just want to say thank you so much thank you. for doing this. This was lovely and extremely nice inspiring. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Hi, this is Neelam Kothari Soni. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to Pink Villa.